Trailer time. Welcome back, everybody. Hi, everybody. Whoa. We're Hope here with on. Team Necropolis, Dev. That's what I call you on social media. Yeah. <laughs> That's Dev. a Egg. strange way to do it, but sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, uh, I'm Connor Monahan, and I am the designer, uh, one of the two designers on Necropolis. One of the two? Yes. I didn't know that. Who's the other dude? Uh, our other designer is Trevor King Yost. We kind of like uh, tag team that. Mm. Uh, cool. And uh, yeah, we were. Uh, like the best team. wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just. <laughs> well, we, we have like a special, like, secret, like, kind of move that we do, but we're waiting for, like, launch day to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. Naturally. Naturally. Yeah, like, it's kind of like the Summer Slam sort of, sort of thing. So. Can't we'll wait see, to see the spandex. We'll see that later. Hey! <laughs> Top that, Chris. Hi, Chris. <laughs> I'm in trouble. What do you do? <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Rogers, and I'm the art director on Necropolis. Yay! Woo woo! So. Oh, hey! Oh. Incommendates. Thank you. Thanks for resubscribing. Oh, gee. Oh, yeah, some people are asking me who's Bunny Specs. I'm Bunny Specs. I'm the community manager on Necropolis. I'm newish to the oh, whole. Bunny, bunny Specs? Yes. Yeah. This is a thing? Yeah, that was my Discord username. Oh. And then they're like, there's a, a Necropolis Discord. So, by the way, if you guys want to talk more Necropolis, feel free to join the Necropolis Discord. My username is Bunny Specs. It was like a joke. I, I should wore get glasses and bunny ears, and but it just sounds like bunny poops. Mm. Anyway. So I'm the I'm the fourth wheel here, actually. Why yeah. That, you that? you guys are the Necropolis team. Well, I. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, you may be the fourth wheel, but we can kind of do like an honorary setup here. Maybe I have. Oh yeah. Shirts. Yeah. Oh what? What? No way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, I've been wanting one of these. Oh no, it actually doesn't. I'm no, it does. No, it doesn't. Oh. Whatever, the shirt, you can say, you can call me whatever you, you can, want. You can be shirt. a part of the team, oh, sort of. Check out that brazen head. Right now. Okay. Check out that brazen head. Awkward. Woo! Uh, yeah, so, what's the deal? What are we doing here? Why am I here and not making a game? Um, this, this is my the chat first question. room has some very special questions. Oh. Uh, we promised them the ability to ask those questions directly. So instead of funneling through me, you guys are on the hot seat. Um, so chat room, uh, get your questions ready. 
I'm interested in the origin story. I heard two dudes had a dream or something. Yeah, so uh, Necropolis... Dream. <laughs> Definitely, it was not your normal dream. Yeah. Necropolis really started with Chris Conert and Dennis Detweiler. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. um, they put together the pitch, and the idea was to take sort of an 80s D&D &D experience. Oh, cool. But mm -hmm. turn it on its head, and if mm -hmm. you're familiar with the movie Cabin in the Woods... Oh, Cabin uh, in the Woods. Sort of do for fantasy what horror, what uh, Cabin in the Woods did oh, for horror. Oh, so, yeah. that's uh, really It's a very tongue-in-cheek, and yeah. that you're going to die a lot, but right. hopefully it won't be too painful. Right. So, um, <laughs> some people are asking... <laughs> Uh, Jamesimo says, how tired are you, Connor? I, I am I am tired. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of the best scale to put it on, but tired enough that um, on the drive over here at every red light, I took my glasses off and was rubbing them. Oh, no. I've got to get you some, uh, <laughs> some minty eye drops. Um, we're getting there. Uh, we, we, had some, we had some big conversations today. We're feeling really good about stuff. Awesome. Good, good. Um, and uh, the game's coming out in like seven days. Yeah, so. a week from today. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I'm, I'm super excited. I'm tired, but I think the excitement is far exceeding the tiredness. I'm really excited, too. Yeah. Are you guys also coming to the hashtag Necro Death Jam Death this Girl. Saturday? Yes. yes. We will awesome. be here. Yeah. We'll be uh, providing what little advice we could ever give because the Necropolis is an unrelenting death machine. And drinking that un un unidentified potion. Well, I would, my, one of my first pieces of advice, do not do that. Oh. that is That's true. That's how you vomit, right? Risky idea. Yeah, it's a really risky proposition. All sorts of bad things can happen if you drink unidentified potions. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so just keep that uh, Joan Soda as a collectible, I guess. Yeah. Sit on that thing, it'll be worth millions. So yeah. a lot of people, um, you know, we've heard this comparison to Dark Souls, Spelunky, if Spelunky had, and Dark Souls had a baby, um, but what specifically from the game was inspired by Dark Souls, games like it? Were there other games that inspired uh, Necropolis that you guys were looking at? Sure. Well, I think there's a lot of different things in it. It just depends on which aspect of the game you're you're examining, right? So if you're looking at something like um, control like scheme, the co control scheme, <laughs> the combat system, mm -hmm. the control scheme and the combat system are are very heavily influenced by Dark right. Souls. So if you're familiar with that game, it's going to feel familiar. Awesome. It's not meant to uh, mirror or in any way like imitate, sure. but it takes the the kind of notes of uh, skill based play, uh, animation based attacks, like timing, where sure. timing is a very big right. element of how you approach enemies. Mm -hmm. Those sorts of elements were taken. Right. Uh, and then actually, you know, taking roguelike as a name very seriously, the thing like Unidentified Potions, that is very much a, a mechanic yeah. from Rogue, the original Rogue game. Oh, so somebody was actually asking, yeah. who yeah. here has actually played Way back. Rogue? I have played Rogue. Oh. And, I, and I want to clarify that because a lot of people will try to, uh, you know, they have different ideas about what right. Roguelike is. Um, and and a lot of people who, who throw that word around have not played Rogue sure. and misunderstand what a Roguelike is meant to be. Yeah. So we are definitely Roguelike in the sense of many of the systems that we do are based on a lack of information. And if you've played Rogue, right. you don't have a lot to go off of when you play that game. Yeah. So was that part of research when doing this game, or did you actually play it beforehand? Like, had that just been an experience you've been know. subjected it, to as a child? In my video game hipster, if I say I played Rogue before I worked on a roguelike... That's like, okay. Yeah. That's totally I, yeah. okay. I, Rogue as a I was kid. just curious. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm sure. All right, so Nick Leaf has a whole bunch of questions, um, right. and I've heard these questions over and over again mm -hmm. as community manager, so maybe we can finally... You know, set them straight. Sure. Um, what are your plans for Necropolis if it proves to be successful? I know expansions or DLCs have been talked about, but are there any concepts that you've sort of planned aside from the Brute and the Archimist, such as dual wheel, larger assortment of ranged weapons, etc.? So I think mm -hmm. that implies some a few misconceptions about the game, mm -hmm. um, because I know some of our early footage and our trailer mm -hmm. uh, mostly features um, the hook blade mm -hmm. and the shield, mm -hmm. but there are a shit ton of things in Necropolis. Sure. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to unpack any of that. Well, yeah, I would just uh, I'll attack like the the, the kind of current sure. part of that, which is that we have a lot of weapons in the game. Uh, we have a lot of variety in terms of how they attack and different styles of play based on those things. So if you're someone who is a bruiser type person and likes to hit with big punches yeah. and really do a lot of damage in one fell swoop, then we have heavier classes of weapons that can cater towards your style of play. If you're very much that kind of pester and attack and back away uh, type character, we have weapons that are suited towards that. So we do have a lot of variety in how the game operates in the weapon systems that we have. But I think Chris can probably give better information as to like sure. plans for the future. <laughs> I'm gonna dodge yeah. that question. I'm gonna use the B button and I'm gonna dodge out of the way. Of the <laughs> 
and just let Mr. Rogers yeah. take over that. That's in the spirit um, of the game. Yes. You know, we have a lot of plans to support the game post-launch. Uh, there are uh, some concept art floating out there of the Brute and the Arcanist, uh, who are characters that are uh, near and dear to our hearts. Um, we can't say too much about them yet, uh, but we have a lot of plans to support post-launch and uh, in success, as Jordan Weissman would say. All uh, things are possible. All things are possible. Yeah. Right now we're focusing on getting you the game yeah, and exactly. making sure that it is the best possible game it can be uh, at launch. So that's what we're focusing on right now this week and that is why I am tired. <laughs> yeah. All right, I have a hefty question for you guys. Okay. Hefty. All right, so given uh, Hairbrain Scheme's past success and experience with Bring Back Shadowrun and now Battletech, so do you think in a lot of ways, I guess this game is meant to push everyone outside of their, their comfort zone or is it just because the team has expanded in such a way that made you guys want to tackle like totally different gameplay, totally different storytelling elements as the previous games? Yeah, well, um, so we started out, you know, uh, the company really started out as eight people in the closet, but mm -hmm. did the Shadowruns Kickstarter. Uh, we grew quite a bit after that. Uh, Were we, you one of those eight people? I was one of the eight Crazy. people. Crazy. The closet was only like a block away. What? <laughs> That's incredible. Um, since the then, dark times. <laughs> yeah. The I warm mean, times. It was very times. warm in that closet. I, I will say I that the, uh, the the water fountain faced the women's bathroom, and the only way for us to get water was to fill like a pitcher up against the water fountain, <laughs> kind of sideways, and kind of, <laughs> but then like standing next Just to the Just be hanging out bathroom, there. Like, <laughs> It was oh, so that Chris always hanging by the. Very awkward. He's so thirsty. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like dehydrated most of the time because I looked at the empty pitcher of yeah. water and said, ah, "No, no, thank you." Um, but uh, we've we've uh, we've since then um, we started pitching some different ideas, and Dennis and, and yeah. Chris's idea was the one that kind of won out, and it is a departure from us from yeah. like this turn-based, absolutely mm -hmm. strategic game. Um, but it was a way for us to grow in a new direction. And one thing about the company's name is that it's Hairbrain Schemes. Yeah. yeah. We're going to try something new. New all the ideas. Time. Uh, Absolutely. If it's, uh, if it's uh, if something we really feel passionate about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Speaking of, everybody loves the art style, loves, yes. loves, loves it. Um, Thank you very much. It was all me. Chris had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I appreciate all the feedback and support, guys. Thanks very um, much. Like, how did that come <laughs> about? You know, did you have a dream? Were you smushing together two artists that influenced you? Like yeah, well, um, we'll start, maybe <laughs> maybe we'll answer this question backwards. Sure. So we have a great team. Um, uh, Fiona Turner, uh, Marion Huber, um, Doug Magruder, Matt Lucas. Uh, we've just got a, a mic check mm -hmm. um, and June. Jacob and all Jacob, those guys. thank you, Holly. Yeah. Uh, we just have such a great team, and right. they brought it to life. But uh, when it was first starting out, um, as we started to really try to come to terms with the game, I think a lot of people were still imagining that we would do something very Dark Souls, where right. it's gritty and there's high fantasy sort of, yeah, or that and, kind of know, thing. The chainmail has a little bit yeah. of rust on yes. it. And, mm -hmm. You know, and everything's kind of slightly wet and maybe a little bit more. And all the and, NPCs die. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Um, and that that made dying uh, pretty hard on you, right. and so pretty quickly we started to move to this idea of like, well, what? Let's try something. Let's try right. this. Let's try something a little more cartoony. Right. We tried that, but that didn't feel like the stakes were high enough. Right. This is, we tried this big kind of hulking character with little tiny legs, and when he ran, he kind right. of like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, he was too goofy, and yeah. um, and then we kind of hit on this idea of this thief, and we said we're gonna take out textures. Right. Um, we're gonna take out feet um, just to see what happens. Uh, we tried taking out hands. Right. Uh, that was too far. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just like weird. Pull back a little bit. All right. Yeah. yeah it was like Need hands down. to hold swords. Um, and you know, uh, it was really the male thief, um, and the male thief actually right. made it into the game. Right. Uh, and that was where we really started out. And if you go back and look, right. kind of crawl backwards through our Tumblr, you can see mm -hmm. uh, the starting off there. And the idea was. See if I can pull it up. Keep talking. <laughs> if we take uh, if we take something really abstract, but right. make sure that it moves really realistic, so that the the characters dodges and the, uh, all the characters have a lot of cloth hanging off of them, mm -hmm. so it really flows as they move around. That Those that hips motion, move. <laughs> it's impressive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So is to, to add that to add that motion. I, I saw a comment. Uh, oh, out <laughs> this is the Rob Liffield, uh, which is great. <laughs> um, but uh, if if we added a lot of motion into into the characters and they moved real realistically, you would start to believe in it and you'd start to really feel the visceral combat, which I think yeah. you do when you're playing. You yeah. really feel like you're trying to stay alive. I, I definitely agree with that. I think it's interesting because you, it, it's something that you hit on um, where 
we could have gone down this route of being Dark Souls and being gritty, and I think, as someone who's played a, a decent amount of Dark Souls, the feeling I have when I die is is one of kind of exasperation and frustration of like, ah. fuck, I just died, like, oh, that's not good. Uh, and when I die in, in Necropolis, so and <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is Raisin daughter head. Head. Oh. Head. Yeah. fan art. Oh, look at there! there. Yep. And, uh, and, and in Necropolis, when you die, my expression is almost always of like hilarity, of like, what? That's insane. And I think it has a lot to do with the, the kind of style of things and the fact that you, the brazen head and the other things like that, it's kind of hard to be mad at the game, I think, in a lot of ways. And so I think the art style definitely helps sell that in making it more fun, making it feel less grounded, and therefore making it a little bit more lighthearted. I don't know. That's my experience. Um, yeah, I would agree, and I would say also, you know, death counts for a lot in our game because when you die, you lose everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Except for, uh, just uh, our token what? currency will persist between life, between lives, but you lose all your progress, mm -hmm. you lose your weapons, you lose your armor set. Yeah, the cash so you're carrying in your matters pocket. Matters for a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the cash, the credit cards. Okay. Oh, uh, this, yeah. uh, Necrotic Sloth asks a good question. Since I like going into a game knowing as little as possible, mm -hmm. I've not read much up to uh, this point. Are the peace? Are there peaceful zones like towns or temple-like places to rest? Because so, this game is very like <laughs> ah. Uh, so uh, the best. I'm trying to think of the best way to answer that question. There are places where you will be able to like take right. a minute and and pause and and you know craft some have stuff. Have your reprieve and, and craft die. some stuff. And, <laughs> but that's only when you've carved out an area where so you, you have kill to clear things. the area. You kind of have to clear yeah. the area, and you can find places where you can try to be safe, but. The kind of idea behind the necropolis is that it continues to move and churn even when you stop. Right. So do so at your own risk uh -huh. is all I will say to that. You can find spaces to rest, but really be careful about where you pick. Somebody <laughs> says, how is the difficulty level determined and what happens to it once you die? Hmm. That's an interesting one. Uh, so the difficulty level is, um, I would say it's it's kind of static in the sense of uh, there are no difficulty settings for the game. It's just Necropolis. It is the same level of difficulty for everybody. Uh, but the game does ramp up right. in difficulty as you go in, like any other you know uh, action type game. The enemies you face later in the Necropolis will be uh, deadlier. They'll be more lethal. There'll be more of them. They'll have different ways to attack you that are new. Um, so for Necrotic Sloth, like you like going into a game and not knowing much about it. Well, like you're gonna go into the game and you're gonna see enemies and be like, oh, I know how this guy's gonna work. And then all of a sudden he like ducks out of the way and hits you right. with a left hook and you're right. dead. You're like, oh well. Uh, this is a learning experience. Let's all grow from this. Let's, you know, put forth a better effort next time. Damn you, so head. the difficulty definitely comes from learning the game and understanding the game, not necessarily selecting hard, normal, right, or easy. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah. Um, I know there were some questions floating around about um, uh, if you're playing a multiplayer game and you're not one of the ones hosting it. Can you, like, what is that, like, can you come back to it? Is progress saved? Mm. Some of those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, I want to get into specific. Oh, man. So we, we have very long meetings about right. just trying to, the best way to, to kind of communicate to people because it is a very robust and right. interesting system. Basically, I'll give you, like, the high level of it, which is that when you play a game, your computer has the save information that you have. When Chris and I play together, we share that information right. with each other. And then the next time we try to play together, what the game will do is look to see if we have shared information right. that we've had in the past, uh -huh. and then it will basically sync us up to that previous oh, information. Cool. And so like, uh, what that means is we can play together, and then basically he can leave, and I can continue to play right. on that information. Right. And then he can come back later, right. and it will bring back his old stuff that he right. had uh, if we had played together in the past. Right. Okay. Now there's some uh, other kind of cases with that, but for the most part, if you played with someone before, you'll be able to play with them again, right. and the stuff you had the last time you were playing with them will be there. And the game is fairly seamless between multiplayer and single player in that you can be playing, Chris can jump in, help you out, <laughs> maybe kill you a few times, accidentally or not, Oops. I can't say. Uh, and then he can leave and you can continue and you're just like no loading, nothing like that. The game just kind of goes and it's seamless and it's all drop in and drop out. And that's one of the things we wanted is we wanted Necropolis to be a very simple, very straightforward experience where you're not jumping through hoops to play. I think, I think that's something I would say is the game, the emphasis that we always tried to put on it was right. you can jump in and play with your friends. So yeah. you're level one, they're on level nine. <laughs> Um, you can jump in and play. If that sounds want. really scary. It is. It's really scary. Um, what you need to do is they need to protect you a little bit, right. and they can drop uh, weapons for you. Oh, and they can, can pretty they quickly give you a get codex? you. 
No, no. you cannot, you cannot <laughs> okay. transfer codexes right. between players, but everything besides codexes, sure. uh, you can drop shields, weapons, so codexes potions. Codexes or codices? Uh, let's not get into the semantics <laughs> yeah, yeah. of that. Uh, there might in this world, you can say it's whatever you want. Yes. I like you. I Yes. In our world, it's whatever we say it is. In the world is. of there Zootique, you go. It's, uh, it's codexes. It's codexes, yes. Uh, there, was, there was actually quite a bit of debate about whether it should be codexes or codices. And, yeah. uh, so it's codexes? It's yeah, codexes I'll, in the world of let's, Zotique. Let's, I, I think you made I the right choice. About I'm going to pull back the curtain <laughs> a little bit here and give you guys a little game dev inside, <laughs> inside track. Thing. Inside okay. baseball. Uh, here we sometimes go. Sometimes you make spelling mistakes <laughs> and they sometimes get carried forward and then then you just don't want to necessarily change that. And other times you can just make up language entirely. Sure. And that's the best In way the to go about it. In the world of Necropolis. So, yeah. <laughs> Plus language is fluid anyways, so yeah. whatever. Exactly. Somebody's exactly. saying um, thanks for taking the time to answer questions rather than, you know, sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I well, we had the day off yesterday. Uh, yeah. pe people were were burning the midnight oil, doing some stuff uh, over the All weekend. The but weekend, yeah. but uh, but most of us were able to take a beat yesterday, rest, and enjoy the holiday. So oh, we slept yesterday. I slept. I slept this this week once. I'm good. It's a strange part of the of the development <laughs> cycle because a lot of people are not actually touching the game right now right. because we have to be really careful about who's right. in and who's out. That's so a really good there's point. Only, there's only a lunch. few people that are working really hard. Our QA team is working really hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, our engineering team is working really hard. Um, and our art team uh, has to be hands off right now. So yeah. they're still working hard, right. but they're not. Uh, they're yeah. not working the holiday. And they're kind of well. They're in a lot of cases. They're they're doubling as uh, like our, our additional test forces. Right, right, they're right. they're getting in there and they're playing the with and us that. and they're helping out. Hands so, on deck. Yeah. Everybody. There's no lack of work for people. Let's just say that. Okay. <laughs> Now, someone asked about if there's any static parts of the the maps that you play in, or is it all going to be procedurally generated the whole time? So, procedural generation is kind of a double-edged sword, okay. uh, both in terms of when you use that language and when you actually build a game right. around it. Mm -hmm. So, from the language perspective, uh, like rogue, like it's a word that we throw out there that's kind of nebulous and doesn't it's not right. super well defined. Like, right. who, who says what is procedural and what's not? As long as there's some random generation, you could call it procedural. Sure. Slap the label on it. Um, and so there's that part that we're trying to kind of combat. And there's also gotcha. the, the, the systemic part, which is like, when you make a game that's procedural, I'm a designer, I want to create an experience for you. As soon as I put random elements into it, I am basically taking my hands off the wheel and right. saying, I hope this goes well. <laughs> um, and so what we try to do is we, try to, we try to set the table to yeah. give you a good experience and try to make that as reliable as possible without making it totally static. Mm -hmm. So when you play the game, there are elements of the game that will appear static uh, because they basically encapsulate the yeah. random elements of the game. Mm. And the first part of the game, uh, the intro module that you go into, is always the same every time. Right. Okay. And that's because we want that to kind of be the, the safe test bed for people to right. learn the mechanics of the game, get a handle on the controls, and be able to do a little bit of experimentation before they get into the actual procedural game. Before you kill them. Before we kill them. Yeah, before yeah, it's we kill like, them, collect some know, gems. Invite someone into your house yeah. and be friendly to them before you, you know, destroy their lives. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And then all bets are off once you open that first door. Once you open the first uh, door. Yeah. Sometimes you just open the door and like a bomb scrounge will like right, run up and right, blow right, up your right, feet and you're right. like, oh, I understand now. Yeah. Yep. It got real. Yep. Um, I saw Kai, Kaiku has a great question, yeah. which is uh, if the host leaves the game, what happens to the co-op partners? Yeah. Um, the game keeps going. So uh, the computers just choose a new host yep. and right. uh, you just keep going. So if the host loses the game, or has to leave the game to go right. get dinner or something like that. Yeah. Everybody can keep playing. That's awesome. And the host can yeah. jump back in later on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The game has been engineered to be as flexible as possible in terms of drop in and drop out. So anybody can drop and anybody can join and there should just nice seamless uh, play. On our end, it's a lot of weirdness, but on your end, it should just work. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, on our end, it's mind that's bending. Good. <laughs> on your end, it should be a simple button press. Um, <laughs> so, there's uh, another question that I've heard um, on the interwebs is, um, what kind of rewards are there for playing multiplayer? Why is is the game better if I play with friends, and why? Yes, and the perfect answer is you don't die immediately. Uh, so when you're in single player, it is roguelike, it is permadeath. So what that means is when a gem eater jumps over a rock and lands on you with a double fist overhead, just rah, and you lose all your health, yep. you're dead. Yep. 
roll roll the the stat screen, start over again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When that happens in multiplayer, you go into a down state where you begin to like bleed out. Mm -hmm. Think of like Left 4 Dead or other games like that, uh, where you have a buddy system where you can revive people, and so your teammates have a set amount of time where they can revive you and bring you back, and you take a penalty to your health and your stamina, all these other different things, right. but you come back and your gear is maintained, you don't lose all your progress. So that's like the huge, big huge difference. Thing. That's, that's pretty nice, like, yeah. When you play with friends, you don't have to die immediately. Right. Uh, but there's other stuff we do in the background to kind of tip the scales a little bit in terms of the Necropolis being more lethal towards you. Right. Um, but that's like the mechanical differences. But I don't know about experience-wise. I mean, how would you describe it in a multiplayer? In a multiplayer experience, yeah, I think you hit on the big one. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I'd say it's really fun when somebody goes down because the res takes some time. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. can't just like run up and just touch, tag them and they're back in the game. Yeah. And, uh, you have to draw away enemies. You can either right. kite them away mm -hmm. or uh, you can um, just finish them off before you pick somebody up. And if they do, if they do uh, go all the way out, if expire. they do if they expire, mm -hmm. um, they respawn in, but as a level one, they lose right. all their equipment and everything. So uh, all that progress that they've made, uh, they start right back in as if they were just starting the game. So you can keep playing even if you do. Yes. Right. So you never get like stranded, you know? It's yeah. like, oh, I died. Now I just got to watch yeah, my all friends my buddies play. play yeah. yeah. So you you will respawn, uh, but again, if. The thing is, if everybody goes down at the same time, which you're like, oh, how could that ever happen? It, it happens, happens all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. Like, One door. I, like, I've I've played Halo before. I've done that, like, you know. Oh, like, yeah, we were like, like oh, let's Checkpoint back scumming. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll run in and kill everybody, and then I'll respawn yeah. on you. Yeah, try that shit in Necropolis. <laughs> Get back to me. Tell me how that works out. Yeah. Uh, I think so, yeah. Uh, Ryan had some good questions. Oh, I had two points. Uh, just that if we did miss your question in chat, um, feel free to copy and paste it back in chat where, where there's a lot Our going on on screen is, is going um, pretty fast here. and there's uh, only you don't, so much we might see at once. Yeah, if you don't mind me jumping in, I see like a really specific question yeah, that's yeah, super get, easy to answer. Robo, Robo, Robot Crash asked, is loot instanced? Uh, it is instanced in the game for everyone, so if an enemy dies and drops weapons or you open up a chest, everyone sees the exact same loot and there's only one of each, right. so it's first come, first serve, and I'm not going to say people have killed each other and then taken each other's loot, but that's potential. You can just down your friend. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go exactly. all out and exactly. kill them. Uh, and so that is the way it works there. Uh, the stores, however, are locally instanced. So when you go to a store, your friend can't buy out the entire store, leaving it empty and with you having no options to purchase. So stores are locally instanced and then loot is instanced on the server and charity. Yeah. Interesting, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I think there was some confusion. So mm. this is a question for Chris or both of you. Oh no, I'm sure, um, I'm sure he can answer it far uh, better than I can. <laughs> so people like want to know about character customization because sure. there's a con I think they are confused between is this a different character or a different armor set? And then also the dyes, you know, Sure. Can you clear that up for people? So our starting class, uh, the class that we're launching with, mm -hmm. right. the Guard. class that we're talking about right, right now, is the Black Guard. Right. Um, the right. Black Guard's a thief, uh, fast and kind of swingy. Um, uh, Malika's scrolling through some stuff right now uh, with some different armor sets, and the different armor sets have different play styles. Uh, the heavy armor sets uh, will slow you down but give you some extra uh, heft and... Yeah, other, other ben benefits in the background, obviously more protection, but it all comes, you know, it's always risk-reward balancing right. off, yeah. But this is still a Blackguard. Yes. It's okay. still Blackguard. Right. Um, so when you start off, you can see Blackguard, mm -hmm. son of uh, something, son of Thra or, or yeah. Blackguard. Daughter of daughter, Botar. Right. Daughter of Botar. And this is also another Blackguard, just mm -hmm. a different yes. armor set. Yes, okay. that's that's one of my favorite armor sets because it's fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. fast. And it yeah. looks cool because you're like... Sweet hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sweet hat. So it's, it's all the same character it's all just changes of clothes right. but one of the things that we do have in terms of the persistence is the color system the, right. so I, I Chris built that entire thing in terms of all those colors and how they work so could you how does that actually because I don't know uh, like the the armors have like uh, places where they can inherit colors yes. like how does that work so that wasn't me well uh, <laughs> well I mean it all the pretty colors uh, so and so luckily um, our character team uh, uh, Fiona, Marion, Stephen, um, all uh, worked really hard uh, yeah, when they were making that. Yes, yeah, Perfect exactly. Example. Great Perfect example. example. And those are actually a male and a female model mm -hmm. too. So, mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, so they laid out the textures in such a way that we can sort of procedurally color them. And as you proceed through the necropolis, only certain colors will be available to you depending on how deep you've gotten. So right. if mm. you want to show off that you got to the uh, seventh level and right. you put on the black and yellow armor yeah. as the you know daughter of Sea of Glass, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. and everybody else can wonder why they didn't have it yet. It's because they didn't get deep enough yet Ooh. to uh, yeah. to pick up that color set. Yeah, and so those color sets are purchased uh, in, in the game with uh, the tokens that you earn as you play through the game and complete objectives for the brazen head. And those tokens and the colors and the codexes that you buy with the tokens, those are the three kind of persistent elements uh, of the game. So you don't lose those. So you don't lose you the don't colors. You don't lose everything. Uh, yeah, and, the, and that's one of the ways that you can unlock and kind of improve your character, so to speak, over time is just more customization. And that's where the customization, right. customization comes in, which is that you find the armor in the game session, mm -hmm. but how the armor appears and the color it takes on is based on which color you've picked at the beginning of the game, based on what you've purchased in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw a question a little bit back. There was a bunch of questions, and one of the questions in, within there was, how long does the game take to complete? Right. So, mm. ooh, good question. That is a good question. Uh, I think We're the average time is about seven minutes. On Saturday. Uh, because <laughs> you're dead. No. Uh, to complete the game, it, it really depends on skill, right? Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to play the game. If you want to kind of avoid combat, you can just try to like sneak around and right. run past enemies. The problem that that presents, though, is that you're not earning gems because you're not mm. killing people. Right. And you're not getting weapons because they're not dropping anything for right. you. And if you're running away from them, they're kind of giving chase. Mm -hmm. And that respite we were talking about before, that moment to take a pause and craft and maybe right. buy stuff from the store, it's like, you got nine horde men crawling right behind you with swords yeah. and they're angry at you. Right. You don't really have a chance to right. heal yourself. So you can try to run and maybe that'll go a little faster up until the moment you're surrounded by guys more powerful than you and die. Uh, but in a typical playthrough, to get to the end of the game, it'll take more than like two to two and a half hours. Like it'll it'll take like one person. to yeah. build up to that point where yeah. you can and even it, do and that. It really depends because some people are just uh, a little bit more skillful, and others are, are more methodical. They'll explore more than Acropolis. Mm -hmm. You you can take the optimal path, and if you can find it, and uh, or you can just kind of explore and try to hit every single room on that floor before going down. It's really however you want to play. But I mean, we're talking yeah, three, four. Some people will take even longer than that. So it really depends on the play style. It's hard to give like a solid number, but the number we kind of say outwardly is about four hours. It's like yeah. a good average play session. That it wow. takes me it takes me a little bit longer. I'm a much more methodical player, so yeah. I, I maybe clear, you're a completionist and you like to explore. Yeah. Yeah. I just I want to know that nothing's coming behind me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Put, putting all this beautiful art in the game, gotta go explore yeah, and see explore. it. Yeah, explore. There's like there's secret, uh, lots of little areas. Oh. Um, of a few people are asking variations of this question, mm -hmm. like what is available for, uh, to people who enjoy magic range combat mm. besides the crossbow? Mm -hmm. So in the game, we have a suite of different things that you can use. So uh, we have crossbows in the game, which are basically a ranged option. Uh, your left hand is, uh, your right hand is your primary weapon and your left hand are basically your secondary weapons. Now, mm -hmm. the shield is technically a weapon in the sense that uh, its first function is to block, but its second function you can do a shield bash, and you can attack enemies with it. It does a lot less damage, uh, but it is technically a weapon, and basically when you find crossbows, you can just switch out between having a shield and having a crossbow. Uh, and there's a few different types of attacks on those. We have a, a, a wand or two in the game that function like crossbows, but then we also have a whole array of uh, scrolls, and these scrolls basically are kind of... Uh, outward facing abilities that can affect other enemies in the game. So if potions are kind of the internal uh, magic, scrolls are the external magic. Potions change the way that your character functions, scrolls change the way that other people function. No. So you can like freeze guys in place or put a curse on them and suck their life and that sort of stuff like that. And with potions, I was curious, is there any way to test it uh, besides drinking? You can identify potions with okay. a scroll, and that's okay. one of the ones that's kind of like that outward magic. You're affecting the potions, you're you're uh, identifying them. But aside from that, you could maybe give it to a friend, and maybe they've <laughs> have them test it. Like, hey, <laughs> bottoms hey, have, up. Have you have you had this one in the past? And they're like, oh yeah, that's definitely the vi the potion of vigor. And then you drink it and you vomit. Like, okay, maybe uh, I lied. It yeah. might have not been the potion of vigor. But yeah, so you can you can do some swapping of potions and try to get okay. help from your friends. But unless you identify it or unless you drink it, that's the only way to find out. Yeah, gotcha. That's true. Um, any advice for the um, contenders this mm, week? Ooh, yeah. Some of them might be watching right now. For the Death Jam contenders. Well, Death That's Jammers. Two hours. Yeah, you got two hours. And they're going to be competing for various. There's one thing that I would things. say Friendly yeah. Fire is on. Friendly Fire is on. So you That's need a big to, one. If, you're, if you're near each other, you need to call out your power attacks because mm -hmm. otherwise you will wipe your party. Uh, and take out like Oopsies. a horde man pariah or something. And I think, <laughs> I think another important thing is that you don't need to outrun the gem eater. You just have to outrun your friend. 
Yeah, there mm-hmm. you go. <laughs> yep. So that's that's probably the best piece of advice I can give. <laughs> is run away. Run, run away, away very fast. Run away. But I, th- <laughs> okay. I thought you said, well, then you won't pick up your, your power-ups and stuff. When your friends kill them, then oh. you come in and steal all the loot, yeah. obviously. I saw I saw a question earlier that was like, how often do we troll each other while we're playing? Um, and one of the best things that you can do is there's special golden chests that yes. can only be opened oh, with no. your persistent currency. Mm-hmm. And they're guaranteed a good drop that will help you on your playthrough. The person that opens the chest isn't, isn't it? necessarily the person who ends up with the chest. So a lot of times what will happen is somebody will open the chest, a great weapon will pop out, somebody else will scoop it, and then that will usually start a little bit of a of a, of a little firefight in yeah. between uh, everybody yeah. to sort of... Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, we're we're friendly at work. We yeah. we try not to troll too much, but uh, you know we we've definitely tried to build as many safeguards against kind of griefing yeah. uh, to make sure that that the, the game experience is fun and it's lively and it's not like this horrible overbearing thing where your friends are constantly killing you. Sure. So, uh, but there are times where things can devolve into a little bit of madness. But that's the game. That is Necropolis. It is this very kind of poorly contained madness. <laughs> I think the idea is that the necropolis is built by Abraxas. He's constructed this large, you know, dungeon and he's put all these things in there and he hasn't done a very good job of containing the madness. Yeah. And that and you're just going through the what the leftovers what, what, what's here. <laughs> yeah. Um so I know you guys need to head back soonish. We like, have to like make a game or something. Yeah, you have to make a game. Um, I have a final question for you guys. What is one little tidbit in the necropolis or something that you worked on that maybe some people in the chat room don't know about that you're super proud of or you think is super unique and makes the game awesome? Hmm. Man, that's a loaded question. Uh, do you have anything off the top of your head? Did you, I, did you contribute that. anything awesome? Well, that's this the is thing the is, question. Well, when you make everything and everything's awesome, it's, it's hard no, to pick one, well, Ryan. No. God. Oh. Um, but if there's just like a little moment well, or item. I guess or... one thing we would point out is uh, a lot of the writing in the game uh, initially was done by Dennis Detweiler, our design director. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, in, in the past few months and stuff like that, a lot of the writing has been done by uh, myself and, and Chris and our other uh, our lead engineer, uh, Chris Koner. So like the kind of three of us are just like writing jokes and passing them back and forth in a Google document and just kind of trying to make the, the humor of the necropolis land. So. I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm proud of all the jokes in there. Okay, you, sometimes you gotta fill out the space you have, right? You can't leave a blank page uh, when you turn in the test. Uh, but there are definitely some some really good ones in there, and that's that's always kind of a fun thing. Is like some of our job is going into the office and making stupid jokes about faceless gods and like people destroying planets accidentally yeah. and just yeah. like weird things like that which is you know you talk to one of your friends right. like how's work it's like oh we got this we got this crazy deadline for this one account it's like yeah i was thinking about um uh, if that axe was too powerful or not you know <laughs> like I, we have weird problems when we're game developers i don't know do you have something specific that you can point to i'm gonna cheat because i'm gonna say oh boy I'm gonna say, watch the fades. If you see the fades, they're yeah. little, Ooh. little oh, yeah. tiny, um, kind of funny, uh, almost funny, like Dim- yeah, yeah, diminutive, little, like yeah. little, mm-hmm. and they've got great crafting material, so you should right. totally kill them because yes. they don't fight back. Uh, yes, a hundred percent. But it's Necropolis, so uh, hopefully something will happen on Saturday that yeah. will uh, teach somebody to be careful around the fade, right. uh, because oh. it's not—it's uh, not necessarily always uh, just a, just such a pushover. Yeah, hmm. exactly. <laughs> that is, that is a nice little one in there. Yeah. So Watch out for the fades, guys. <laughs> yeah, think well, of think you. of Chris when you fight the fades. <laughs> yes. When you yeah. mercilessly well, kill Well, actually, them. Uh, it's funny you brought up the uh, the jokes because somebody on Twitter asked me. Or the brazen head. <laughs> uh, brazen head, what is love? And Chris is like, let me think about that. Mm. And then you emailed me the answer. Do you what remember was the what answer? The I don't. It was something about I don't know anything about love, but I know a lot about breaking hearts. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was like, what? Good answer. Good Good answer. answer. All right, cool. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you guys so, so much for coming over. For talking for to us. Thank you so much over. for having us. Yeah. And thank you, chat, for all yeah. of your questions. Yeah, I'm you so sorry much, if we didn't get to all of them. Uh, we have some questions that we had here and some questions that we had in there. I think you can tweet them at uh, Necropolis Game and we'll, yes. uh, we'll yep. tackle them there. Yes, absolutely. That's my job. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. All right, Bye. thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so, so much, everybody. everybody. Thank you.